Yesterday uh, was the commemoration, as we all know, of uh, 9-11 and what happened uh, nine years ago. Back then, nine years ago, is actually right when, and many of you know, when the Schulers, my family, uh, rolled into town. It was our, uh, September 1st was our first full day in the Washington, D.C. area, the first full day in our home. We moved out here from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, in coming out to uh, Washington, D.C., of course, we had no idea what was going to happen just a matter of uh, 10, 11 days later from that date. And, uh, and we uh, headed into the city. The Pentagon was on fire. The smoke, actually, the fire had been, was being put out, and the smoke was billowing. And uh, as the smoke was billowing out, we watched all of this taking place from the freeway, went into the city, and that was when we spotted uh, what would become the prayer center, and, uh, and we had a prayer center for two years. Out of that came the church, Capital Life Church. So in many ways... When we talk about 9-11 and all the tragic things that happened there, what is amazing is God was moving upon the hearts of individuals to come into the D.C. area with us not knowing what was happening. I've talked with several that came out here to plant ministries and knowing that there would be those that would gather with them and that we would have ministries that would be going on that would just be incredible, just incredible uh, you know, opportunities to minister at a moment that was strategic uh, to the heart of our nation. And so, uh, so in 9-11, uh, we think of all of those that lost their lives. We think of the tragedy of what happened, the sinfulness of the heart of man, but at the same time, how awesome our God is. So, uh, so let's look right away, going right into the Word of God. I have an urgency in me to get right into the Word of God. Uh, and I want to look at John, the 12th chapter, the first through the 11th verses. Six days... Before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was being uh, given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. Some of you may be smelling a fragrance right now. That's part of the message. Don't get concerned. We're not on fire. It used to be that in the days uh, of old, you know, with the early church and then going through the uh, successive decades and ultimately generations, so often the worship experience would be attached to uh, aroma, attached to uh, the smells of worship. We've lost that. Uh, to a large degree, uh, we have lost that. And by the way, you could put your fires out if you need to so we don't catch the place on fire. I think that we'll continue to smell the fragrance here. But we've lost that degree of that multi-sensory worship. Uh, we've gotten to the point where it's become more about what meets the eyes than, the, the, than all of the senses of what the church has known in earlier days. That's why it's important that we see, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, as keeper of the money bag... Uh, he uh, used to help himself to what was put in it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she would save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, uh, whom he has raised from the dead, had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. This story is a familiar story. I've preached on it before, but every single time I look at this story, I see something new, something that we can learn in our, our lives about how to worship God and what was taking place at this moment 2,000 years ago and how that translates in practical ways to how we live, how we can be effective for the kingdom of God, and how we can become more like our Savior. 
So I want to look through these scriptures, and I want to start with that third verse. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. Pure nard is the way that the New International Version speaks of it. Spike nard is what it is. It was called spike nard because the root was shaped like a spike. Therefore, spike nard, found in high up in the Himalayas. The very best of it would be placed in what would be alabaster boxes. And those alabaster boxes being the containers then would be something very, very precious. Judas uh, will note the expensive nature of it, that this was worthy of a year's wages, actually some 300 days of wages. Translated into modern ter terms, that would be anywhere uh, it is stated from $10,000 to thirty or more thousand dollars. That may sound like a great deal. This was a precious uh, ointment. This was something that only those uh, who had the ability to have such a thing would be able to have this, and it would be doled out in very uh, small portions a lifetime through because of the precious nature of what it was. And so we see that it was an expensive perfume. We may wonder why most moments in our lives are forgotten. Sometimes I can't even remember what I did maybe just two, three, four days ago. Sometimes it's hard to remember last month's specific dates. If we were to go back to last month's calendar, it'd be very difficult to say what we did on, on certain days we've forgotten. Sometimes with certain people that cross our paths, certain people that are in our lives, uh, you know, somebody will say, remember so-and-so, and we won't remember them. We'll go, they'll talk about somebody that went to college with us or somebody in high school or maybe somebody's, you know, trying to contact you on Facebook and saying, I so enjoyed our friendship. And you're thinking, who in the world is this? You know, who is this person? We forget moments. We forget at times people. And I think the reason why moments at times or people could be forgotten is because they do not bring with them into our lives anything of great value. That may sound cruel to say because certainly every person is of a great value. I don't mean it that way. What I mean is we have a tendency to hold what is great value in our lives and not share it. Love is a great value, and yet there are moments in which people desperate for love that we pass every day or that we work with, we hold on to love as if it's something that is so precious to us that we can dole it out only in small places, in small ways, and so that we don't in some way lose the love that we have as if we could. Moments, in order to be remembered, have to have with them some cost, have to have with them some investment, some ability to see that something above and beyond the second mile is where it went to. And that's why we remember certain moments as defining moments. Certain people have had great influence in our lives. Those people, in some way, gave of themselves. They gave of their precious time. They gave of their precious uh, love and, and words and counsel. They were there at a moment where we need them. They stood with us in some way. It, those individuals, we remember. We remember them well. I remember such individuals with such clarity going all the way back into my childhood days. I don't remember everybody like that. I do remember individuals who gave something of themselves into my life. This is a, a very practical lesson. It's so vital that we know it because we want to make an impact in people's lives. But if we give nothing of value, there will be no investment to be an impact in the days ahead. 